Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Stranger of Sword City Revisited. Which is the standalone expansion, or not even really an expansion, just the standalone revision of Stranger of Sword City, previously published by NIS America, now being published by Experience, because apparently they've been wanting to publish their own games for a while. So, there's one thing I want to talk about right off the bat, because... If I don't talk about it, like, right now, I'm gonna forget, and I'm not gonna remember to do it halfway through the bloody video, so... Here's the drill. Under no circumstances are you to play this game in the beginner difficulty that they've added specifically for this new version. Because the beginner difficulty, get this, intensely lowers the encounter rate of enemies on the world map, and it cuts the XP that you get from each individual enemy to about 1% of what you would originally get from them while not changing how much XP it takes to level in the first place. This is my experience with the beginner version. Did all the stuff, got through to the first tutorial dungeon, walked around, did all the tutorial stuff and then went down underground like it tells you to do um, at that particular point in time. First few fights were okay, you get a fairly good set of people early on. Then you go underground, and when you go underground, the average level of the monsters goes up. It's a pretty basic dungeon crawling staple. I ran into a monster that was level 19 in comparison to the level 10s that were on the surface, and got my ass handed to me. I thought, oh, okay, this is something that's easily solved, I'll just go grind for a bit. I walked around the overmap, which is a series of grids, which is like grid, it's grid based movement like any other DRPG ever. I walked around in that grid for three minutes. Three minutes without encountering a single enemy. And when I did, I got 20 XP for characters that need something like 2500 XP to level up. It's broken. It's absolutely broken. I don't know how it even got through testing. I don't know if there's another way to go about it. Maybe you're meant to like sell shit or something like that. I don't know, but it doesn't make any bloody sense. Now that I've talked about that, we can load into my game. Now you might be wondering, well, what did you do when you played the, um, what did you do when you played through on beginner mode and found that it was entirely unfit for purpose? Well, I went and started a new game on normal difficulty. As you can see, I've been playing for about five hours at this point. My main guys are level 12, but everybody else is a little bit lower level. I have a good reason for that, and we'll get into that shortly. I'm just going to go do all the menu stuff while we're here, because I cannot be fucked to do it any other time. I'm running on about an hour's sleep right now, which is kind of insane, considering how... Not so much full of energy I am, but I, I really should be a walking corpse at this point. I don't know why that I'm doing alright by my own standards. So, we'll go have a quick look around. You have your individual party members. Some of these I made myself. Some of these, I, well, most of these are the default ones that are included with the game. Which is perfectly fine. The default guys you get are actually pretty damn good. And they'll, um, just in terms of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just in terms of, like, being capable, you get a decent set of party members right off the bat. So, that's perfectly fine. Every party member has equipment, obviously. They can all equip different things like different weapons and different armors and accessories and stuff like that. Certain items are usable. Every character has different masteries. I have no idea what these skill slots are. They haven't come up yet. Five hours in, I've got no idea what those are. Skills are things that every class has. Every class has multiple of these and they learn them as they go along. You can also get some skills as like birth bonuses, which we'll get into. Everybody has a talent, like there's people who are um, better at detecting traps, people who are better at avoiding ambushes, you know, the drill. Pretty basic stuff. You get divinities, which you uh, charge morale for via fighting in the dungeons, and these all do very specific things. The Holy Light one is intensely useful, you should learn to use that right away. There's plenty of different kinds of classes, I've got two knights who are mainly meant to, like, take damage and dish it back out. Saya is a clocker, which means she can fuck with time, which is pretty neat because she's got an ability that lets her attack twice in one turn. Got a cleric and a wizard, they do pretty basic stuff. One's obviously for healing, one's obviously for attacking. 
And I've got a ranger here who's level 6 and completely behind all my other guys. There's a good reason for that. Um, we'll get into that shortly. It's all, it's all pretty basic stuff. You can keep items around. Some of these items are usable. Even, like, some of the weapons are usable. Like, you can use a thunder rod and it'll actually give you, like, a use of the thunder spell. But, unfortunately, unlike the, uh, first Stranger of Sword City, items actually get cursed if you use them too much. Which really sucks, because it just gets in the way of doing useful stuff. You can come down here to info for blood crystals. You get blood crystals for defeating the, um, for defeating the big main bosses of the game. And once you do, you can spend it on these individual abilities and it goes up along the tree like this. The, this thing here, the wanted lineages, this tells you where bosses are. So we can, it tells you where bosses are and how to find them. So yeah. A knight was melted by a giant slime in the depths of the palace. That's not where we're going, though. We're actually going to the Valley of the Ruined. A sharpshooter that lives in the Valley of the Ruined has a blood crystal. Steal it. Every one of these has a quest level. And if you encounter these guys and you're above that level, you can choose to actively cap yourself to that level in order to earn those rewards down the bottom there. And you can only do that once. Which kind of sucks, but at the same time, it's not too bad. They're unique weapons, but you might end up replacing them with something completely different. You've also got quests... Which are just pretty basic stuff. You got your encyclopedias, you got your maps, and of course you've got your record of how many things you've killed. Uh, options menu is pretty basic. Notably, you can't actually change to the uh, new uh, portrait style that they had in the original Stranger of Sword City. It, here, it's just the original art that you've got to go through, which is which is all right because obviously, well, not obviously, but. This is definitely, like, the better version of the art. But still, it's just a little bit odd that they took that out. So while we're here, you can change your party between six different people. One of the new things about... Um, one of the new things about this expanded version of the game is that the new class is called a Freeman. And the Freemans don't actually come into battle with you. What they do is they stay in the place and they level up. And if they level up enough, they'll actually give you benefits to this whole base here. So... Allies' revive time is slightly reduced during resurrection due to, gr to a great support. That's a bit weird grammar going on there. I've got three of those guys, and they're all leveling up slowly, and... Oh, right, there we go. Uh, they're all leveling up pretty slowly, but, you know, it's nice to have a few of these guys right off the bat. I also have a... Um, I also have Shorty here, who's a fighter who's dead. I also have... Um, I also have a, a Shibi here, who's the default fighter, who's recovering... And I have, I also have, um, Sam, who's a samurai, who's also recovering. Because as it turns out, it's a massive pain in the ass on normal difficulty to deal with bosses, or even just regular enemies that can one-hit you in one round before you even realize what's going on. It's the most frustrating thing in the world. I will return in about 30 seconds when I can get my bloody capture kit to stop slowing down. Hello ladies and gentlemen, um, just so you know, due to the fact that Shadowplay is a piece of crap, I have lost the game audio for the next bit and there's going to be a frame rate counter in the top left. Um, you're not missing that much in the way of audio, trust me. I would like to go back and do this entire video again, but I am literally out of time to make this video. I've already put six hours into this game. I have no time. I'm literally doing this on an hour's sleep, as I said before. So please forgive me for that. Please enjoy the rest of the video. Alright, I'm back. I had to swap the shadow play. God damn it, fraps. So, the way the permadeath system in this game works, and it's very annoying because of the way that it works, is that the idea is when your units go down, they will have to be revived. Either you have to pay a ridiculous amount of money, which is like, that 70, that 7 grand up there would not be enough to revive uh, a Shibi back here. And, or you have to wait for them to recover, which means going back into the dungeon and doing more battles. This also means that you have to spend more time with other different characters, just grinding out battles until you're sure that you can actually get your good people back, or you can try and raise these people up, only to have them get killed in one round, again, by a really annoying kind of enemy. This happens a lot. You can seriously lose characters in one go. The game does let you save, Every time you come back to the base, I fully recommend you that you do that because the game is fucking frustrating to play otherwise. It's it's honestly a real pain in the ass. The problem is that the way this this game also has a secondary permadeath system. You can see up in the top left there, 
L point or life point. Every time a character dies, they lose one of these points. And when they lose all of these points, they literally just disappear into the wind. So you need to keep them at as, at least two life points to make sure that when they die, they don't disappear for good. So you end up stuck with a bunch of people just getting revived with... And you have to just go back and play like really early level dungeons just in order to make sure that you guys don't constantly die out. And unfortunately, I think if they die, you don't even get the equipment back. Like, I've got a bunch of my equipment, good equipment right here on my people. And even then, it's still taken a massive amount of time to get them back up. And if they die, I lose all that equipment, which is a massive pain in the ass. It doesn't even tell you how long, like, a day or an hour is in this game. I assume it's like, I assume it's like an hour for a battle. But, I mean, I really hope it isn't, because if it is, that's... 30-something battles that I have to do to get the samurai back up. Obviously, I'm not very um, creative with my names. You can come to the leader's room to uh, manage and register new people. You can register as many people as you like, notably, but at the same time, you have limited slots, so there's not really that much you can do with it, especially if you want to keep around a couple of freemen. You can also come here to change the class of someone, but no real point doing that when the stats work the way they do. The stats are all very simple and very dedicated to their particular classes, except for the couple of classes that notably have nothing to do with it. Like, um, that notably have nothing to do with using a very specific stat, but you use, like, a wide spread of stats. But still, it can be really bloody annoying to make a knight and then be like, oh, I want to change this guy to something more interesting. Nope, not going to happen. You can also talk to people to get hints about stuff like um, lineage types that are running around, but... Uh, some, they won't really give you that much hints that you can't figure out for yourself for the most part. I can't really say that for sure, but then again, this is, this is about as far as I played the original game. I did finish one extra dungeon, but still. Or at least I got as far as I could in one extra dungeon. You can buy all sorts of different weapons. You can see all the different kinds of stats over there that you can put on them. Obviously, some classes and some births and stuff have access to some of these weapons and some don't. And some of these weapons are goddamn expensive. You can have all kinds of different, like, pieces of armor. There's a hundred different kinds of collectibles. Notably, there is a thing that lets you change the difficulty, but again, with the difficulty being as completely fucking useless as it is, like, I imagine the idea with, um, the beginner difficulty is mainly for the people who are on normal difficulty to swap to it, then swap back. However, to swap your difficulty is relatively expensive. There it is. 4,700 um, gold, and you've only got 10 of them. I mean, you might get restocks later on. I haven't bought anything to check. But still, it's like 5,000 gold normally. That's really bloody expensive. Good God. You can, of course, sell stuff to make money as well. And you can actually make a fair bit of money off these. But notably, um, notably, if, you, if your main character dies... And he can do that. He's, like, the only character who doesn't live by the life point thing. So you can just, like... Uh, play with the stats that way. He doesn't lose any life points no matter what happens. So, if he dies, you have to pay an absolute ton of money to revive him because you can't go back into the dungeon otherwise. So, if you've got a bunch of money, he's dead and you're here, and you don't want to, like, save scum because you put in a bunch of progress, you'll have to go and um, spend all the money you have. Notably, you can spend it on, like, massive XP upgrades, which is what I did, because the people who get created under the, um... Under the what's it called... Under the um, new partner system, are, uh, their level is actually determined by your main character. So, it, yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to deal with, honestly. You can also power up equipment, which is new to this um, enhanced version, which will let you add plus ones to whatever piece of equipment you like. And the power up limit is like 20 at the point I'm at right now, and it just gets higher as you go along. So, it's kind of neat that you can do that, and it does let you prepare a little bit, but... Still, when you're fighting something that you feel like you really shouldn't be, um... When you're fighting something that feels like it's way outside of your weight class, like when you get down-leveled for a, a lineage fight, it's a massive pain in the ass to deal with. You can come here to save and load, obviously, and change your options. But if we leave, we can just go have a look around the map. It's very simple. You can just have a look at all the different locations, and you can go to all of these different places. I'm going to go to the uh, Vault of the Ruined or whatever the bloody hell it's called because this has got a bunch of lineage types that are around my level. So we can demonstrate what battle's like and maybe demonstrate what it's like to hunt down a lineage type. 
just to um, you can hide and I will demonstrate how that works shortly it's mainly meant for looting just like the um, crystals were in um, uh, demon gaze but we'll show that off shortly what I want to know is I want my valley of the ruined yep a sharpshooter lives here what, what about this guy no, no more hints for that either and okay so yeah we just got three guys that we can go find so let's go see if we can find them so we wander around, it's pretty much like your regular dungeon crawler style thing. I'm just gonna um I'm just gonna fast apply for a little while. The animations aren't really that impressive. Like here I'll show ya. Then they're not even really animations, they're literally just swing away, more or less, right? I mean it's not really that impressive to look at. Which is a shame, because they're they're really good at doing like presentation. Like seriously, this background, this um the backgrounds, the character portraits, and just the general look of the place is great, but as soon as it starts moving, it just becomes a massive pain in the ass. One of my members has been poisoned here. I just need to remember where I need to go to actually use my Cure Poison spell. There we go. Let's take care of that. So it is a pretty basic DRPG. You wander around, you run into different kinds of enemies, and you fight them. And there are encounters that you just have to go do. So I've currently got a bit of morale, which means I might as well use it. So, you've got a lot of morale. I can use Flash Escape, but that won't actually um, do me any favours here. So I'll do a full charge attack, just so um, just so you can see just how ridiculous attacks like this can... Oh, it only it only takes effect for one guy. That's uh, that's great. I'm getting all my morale back as, um, as I fight these guys, but they do keep coming in. My... Battle style is pretty basic at this point. Um, I actually have two level ups that I can go do, but let's not do that for the sake of time. Um, yeah, we'll fight this just so I can demonstrate what hiding works like. Thankfully, we also have a treasure chest right here, and we don't have to worry about I'm actually defeating a boss monster in order to actually um, in order to actually get to this, which is nice. Might as well I might as well talk more about the battle system just while you're waiting. So you can fight, which is pretty obvious. You just do an attack. Skills are non-magical things. Um, some skills can require MP, like um, the Cleric and the Wizard have. But yeah, Torn enemies increase avoid, attack an enemy in each row, why the hell not? Sword Chivalry, attack an enemy in each row again, but we won't do that, we'll just fight it off. Uh, we can use spells and skills as well. Like, I don't know why um, the Clocker has your basic cure set of spells, but oh well. If I clock up, she'll actually attack twice, which is a nice little thing to have. She's a nice little um, balance between um, a, a frontliner and a backliner. You can have her pretty much any way you want, which is a neat trick. Uh, um, we don't really need the mage for anything or the wizard for anything. He's not really that useful. And pinned down, but that's not really going to help. I didn't mean to. Um, I didn't mean to um, hit regular apply. I meant to just hit fast apply. The battles in this game do take a fairly long time if you do it the regular slow way. So. Doing it via fast apply will become very, uh, very good very quickly. Very normal very quickly. So you, whenever you open a chest, you have a chance of, you have to find the traps in it. And if you manage to guess the right trap, you'll avoid setting it off. Unfortunately, this means you can hit everyone in the party with poison at once. And if you don't have any MP left on your guys that can take care of that, that's a problem. So, here we are scouting for equipment, more or less. So... The idea is that we have hidden for 5 morale points, and we can choose to pass on this, we can check what the enemy's like. Not very strong, but I think I'm going to pass on it, because um, a wooden helmet box isn't very impressive. Uh, we have... Is, are those claws? Fists. Yeah, we're just going to let those guys go too. Uh, the more danger you build up by passing on more things, the more likely you are to get ambushed if you do decide to go for something. How are we doing here? Level 17 and 18, but it's a silver shield box, so... Oh, well, it's like a metal shield box. But anyway, we get to make the first move, so I'm going to use a divinity thing here. I'm going to give myself some extra HP, and thankfully I can also, you know, take my actual turn as well. So I'm going to use it to um, hit that Hydra in the back, because the way these battles work is that if you let these guys stick around for too long, they will run away and take the treasure box with them. Like, you can see that little crown there. So, as you can see, that little crown means that they're, they're, they're the um, they're the big boss monster. So, I've taken him out. So, the chest is safe. I just need to beat everyone else half to death now. 
and I will defend with him. I'll stop him from using defend. The annoying thing about using things like um, skills and spells is that the AI isn't very intelligent about how it goes about things. Sure, it'll stop using things like skills if it um, if it um, can't use them anymore, just as an example. But if you're using someone like a clocker, like my sire is here, the one lady I've got in the front row, there's a front row and a back row. Obviously, the front row is more likely to take damage than the back row, but um, the back row can't attack the front row without long-range weapons. It's all pretty self-explanatory. I got a rare shield. I can actually try and identify that right now, but I'm probably going to fuck it up. Um, show me that shield. It's cursed. Oh no, it's not cursed. It's a Master Buckler plus 8. That's actually pretty good. I wonder if I've got anyone who's who will actually um, benefit from equipping that. Yes, I do. There we go. Now he's got a better shield on him. Pretty basic system. You All your stuff's identified when you get back to town as well, so... You don't have anything to worry about there. It costs more morale to hide in a place more than once per time that you spawn in. So, um, yeah. Uh, metal box hat. That's actually pretty good. Uh, the clerics are the bitches, though. So, we're going to try and fight them. We're probably not going to do too well, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Because, well, I mean, it's a video. And if I, um, yeah. <laughs> pretty bad way of putting it. I apologize. But, yeah. Um, it wouldn't be a Blue Maxima video if I wasn't a complete and utter incompetent retard at least once in one of these videos, right? So, look, I I find it really hard to have a solid position on um, Stranger of Sword City, especially with this goddamn permadeath system and the game's overwhelming difficulty. Like, see, in just one round, I've been knocked out and relegated to the back row, which means that I've now got a cleric up front and center, which sucks... And I'd have to use an item to fix that up, but I don't have the item to fix that up, unfortunately. So I just have to wait for that guy to get un um, well, un unconscious again. That's a wonderful word. Well done, me. It's it's just really fucking hard. That's kind of the problem with it. Like, even on the beginner... Well, I mean, that's what the beginner mode was supposed to fix. Which is what I'm really pissed off about. Because the beginner mode was supposed to make it so that people... Well, not so much people that um, don't really like dungeon crawls, but at the same time... People like me, who want less challenge in their dungeon crawlers than, well, this. I'm pretty sure that it was meant for us to, you know, like, actually be able to enjoy this sort of thing. Because I like the demon gaze, I like the whole setting and concept of this game. And I like the way that it all works and all that. It's just... I just find it really hard to get into just because of this whole permadeath system. Which means that if I lose a party member, I'm better off reloading my last save and... And just, like, going for it like that. Instead of actually bothering to do anything about it. I think we're done, um, going for, um, items right now. So we'll just go and take out these guys here. Okay, apparently we've got an Assassin Mask. Which, um, gives us extra HP, apparently. That's kind of neat. Um, but yeah. It's just the difficulty kills it for me. And the fact that they absolutely fucked the, um... The fact that they absolutely fucked the, um the difficulty system just means that the most effective way to play the game that isn't incredibly slow and painful is via uh, the normal difficulty which is of course incredibly hard to deal with the fact that there's bloody um bloody permadeath and stuff like that if i had an option to take away the permadeath i would take it i would jump on that shit there are items you can buy that can um, like, revive you instantly, but you still have to recuperate for the life points because the items to, um, like, revive people are still really expensive. So, um, we'll just do the Lich's hand because there's no way there's a teleporter in there. I got a ton of items that time. That's a lot. I got two chests, so there's no wonder. But, oh well. Now, I remember when I came up here last time, I got shot by an arrow. And everybody got hurt. Yep, that happens. And I got hit by another one. So I imagine what I'm looking for... That's the one. Right, so... I need to find my way over there, because that's the lineage I have to kill, I imagine. So... Let's, um... Just to be absolutely safe, use multi-cure so that everybody has the majority of their health back. There's another arrow. You son of a bitch, I'm coming to get you. But I'm going to have to beat this guy first. This is interesting. I haven't actually fought this enemy before. That... Uh, 
A crawler enemy that flies. Someone want to explain that one to me? Whatever. I'll just pin him down just to make sure he can't really do anything. There are some enemies in this game that are really fucking annoying to deal with. Like, um, in the second dungeon, there's an enemy called a tree ant. Well, actually, I don't think it's called a tree ant. It might not be called a tree ant just because I can't bloody remember half the time. But, um, there is an enemy that's basically a tree ant. It's a, um, what's, it's like a tree that walks around and it fires firebolts at people that take out half your party's HP. Really fucking, see? I didn't even get to fucking heal her. She just died. She's gone. She's dead. I didn't even know that was possible. I only took 50 on one hit. I assumed I was going to be fine. But no. Of course that's not going to be the case. Uh, let's divinity up. Um, yeah, holy light. And then I'll show off one other thing that they added to this as well. This is something they've added to the game in the new thing. Whenever someone defends, if that monster decides to attack they will get stunned, like this here. And if they get stunned like this, they are completely incapable of avoiding attacks, which means that you can just go in and beat the ever-loving bejesus out of them if you have the people ready to go. I actually do have a really decent mace on that guy, so I should probably get him to be attacking as well. Um, I don't know what element this guy is, so he'll just get a thunderbolt to the face, and we might as well pin him down again. Fast apply. He takes some damage. Not a massive amount, but if we just get everyone to defend again... It can happen more than once in a row, but you, um, you have less of an opportunity... You have less of a chance each time you decide to use it. Or, well, not, not so much decide, as much as it... If it triggers, your chance of activating it goes down by half. That's what I'm trying to say. We'll have him defend. I need that mana. And we'll pin him down again, and that should be the end of that. The unfortunate thing is, if I leave the dungeon now, I have to deal with all of these bastards respawning. So I'd have to come through all those battles that I just did again in order to actually beat this guy. However, we are right here. I'm gonna fucking die, but I'm gonna try it anyway. So, um, good luck to me, I guess. Uh, is there anything I can do... To make this guy a little bit stronger. I can give him the assassin mask. But that's not really going to help with much of anything really. And he's got the heresy mace. So I want to keep him up front. And I want to keep my ranger in the back. So yeah. Um, I don't have that much in the way of consumables and all that. That I can use to help. I do have heal rings. But that's not going to help me out very much either. So um, good fucking luck to me. Music stopped. Right, so here comes the boss fight. Or, as they call it, a lineage type. I don't, I, I don't know why they call him a lineage, even though he's like just a regular human, but whatever. So, as you can see, quest level 7. So if I was to limit everyone in my party right now, I could get a 1k page grimoire, which is an XP boost, small jewel and assassin cloth, which I imagine is, um, what's it called? Um, something that's useful for, um, one's useful for selling, one's useful as equipment. I'm not going to put a restriction to characters over level 7 because, frankly, if I did, I'd probably fucking die. So, let's get some divinities going. Um, Alright, let's, um, let's do the Holy Light because, of course, and we will do... We might as well just fight stuff that's in the front and try and draw this guy to the front. We might as well get the Cleric in there too. Um, I could fire, bl I'll fire blast that entire row because that'll be very useful and I'll pin down this guy so that That was a lot of damage I just took in that one fucking turn and I only took out half of that guy But thankfully that fire blast did appear to help out so Okay, fight fight spell multi cure Spell fire blast everybody in the back and of course pin this guy down again Making these guys slow down is very important because if they are a higher level than you, they have a better chance of avoiding all your shit just by default. My mage just got hurt. And he's dead. That's it. He's just, he's dead. He's completely fucking dead. That's the most annoying fucking thing. So, I now have a fucking mage in the front row. Might as well just fast apply again. It's not like I'm going to last very long. There goes the ranger. 
So, um, right. What am I gonna fucking do now? So, yeah, I just, I, I'm not, I'm gonna lose this fight. There's just, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm gonna fucking lose. My mage is out of mana, so he's now completely fucking useless. So, we just have to fight off everybody who's up front. And hope that we can... God, I can't even see their HP anymore. I'm guessing that's one of the abilities of one of my characters that went down. So now I've got two knights versus this one archer guy. He can probably call in reinforcements. X-Charge. Fuck you. My guys are ridiculously strong. Unfortunately, I can't find a way to act, um, proactively apply that to all the people in my back row who are now dead. There was probably a better way to go about this fight, but that would involve me save scumming. And I hate having to save scum in order to successfully beat a boss. That, that just kind of, that just infuriates me to no end. No reason not to do anything but fight. Chances are I'm going to either lose all my guys or die. Thankfully that plus 10 HP divinity that I fired off at the beginning of the battle sticks around for a really goddamn long time. So I just got to keep fast applying and hoping that I'll do enough damage to him. So I did manage to win that, but everyone in my party is fucking dead. So there's not really that much I can do. Wonderful. I'm going to have to go and get that fixed up now, aren't I? So yeah, he's dead. And I get the items he was guarding. Stranger's Memento, some extra Grimoires, and a beat-up crowbar, which is like a key item you can use to open up these um, freaking uh, shipping crates that you've got going for you there. So, yeah. I'd be a lot more forgiving of this game if the actual lower difficulty modes fucking worked. I really would be, but... Actually, you know what? I can actually demonstrate just how ridiculous this shit is. So here you can see me um, identifying all these items. Most of this is cell bait. Like, there's nothing you can else you can really do with it. It's just a bit dull. I got a longbow, which is neat, but still. There is a way I can demonstrate just how bad the XP gain and um, enemy encounter rate is. If I reload my previous game, and I use all the money that I can get on me right now to buy a um, difficulty changer, uh, we might be able to make this work. So um, let's buy an item. I'm looking for the difficulty changer. It's here somewhere. I know it is. Um, there it is. The butterfly stone. So if I take the butterfly stone, I can change my difficulty. So yeah, I can change it to beginner now. This is the this is the new difficulty that they added. I don't know why they did normal, easy, and beginner. I, I don't know. They could have done something more interesting like um, lineage hunter, uh, experienced stranger, and newfound stranger, or something like that. That's even that's more interesting than normal, easy, and beginner. But anyway, let's go back to the um, ruined thing. We'll go into a battle. And we'll see just how much XP we get. And just how much easier it is. So we have these two guys. We fight. One's dead. Two's dead. 608 experience. That is nothing. Like, you're get if you're playing on the default difficulty, that's the amount of experience you're getting by default in the first area. Look, it's just three toads. These toads are just piss weak. You can just roll over the top of them. 210 XP. Now, let's go wandering around and see how long it takes for a random encounter to show up. Because you saw earlier on in the video that I did get a random encounter in this area and strafing will eventually find me a encounter. But still, if you need to grind and you need to wait this long for a random encounter that will give you fuck all in the way of XP... Something's wrong. Something is horribly and terribly wrong. Like seriously, I'm just I've been stepping constantly and it just it won't give me a random encounter. Like, sure, I could go and do the monsters that are already there, and I could keep leaving and coming back and stuff like that, but still, it's just really goddamn annoying, especially when the 
random encounter rate, the experience rate, and the level up rate. See? It took me that long to find three fucking thieves. I will counter it with a black wall. Killed them all in one shot. Fuck all XP. Like, those two down there, um, my fighter and my clock- my, my, Well, my second knight, sorry, and my clocker, have been this close to leveling up this entire time. They both got to um, level up within one fight. Now, it's taken them, like, three. That it's- it's- and that's for, from being right on the very edge of leveling up. It's retarded. It's absolutely retarded. They broke it. They broke it hard. And I don't know what the hell they were thinking. 216 experience. Still right on the edge. I know I could go and fight these battles, but they're really no better. Like, watch this. It's just three toads and three of these things again. At most, I'll get like 500 XP for this. They still might not level up off this. See? They didn't even level up off that. They didn't even get 500. They barely got 400. It's retarded. They broke the difficulty. They absolutely broke it. And it it reminds me of another game that I can't put my head on that did something similar that like made it so that easy was just pretty much untenable. But um, yeah, it's, it's bad. It's really bad. I just... I can't recommend it just based on those things alone. The permadeath being a massive pain in the ass just because of the ability, even on beginner difficulty, to get your shit handed to you in one round, combined with the fact that the lower difficulties which you think would be there to offset this problem actually make it way, way worse to play the actual game. Combine that with just a, a couple of improvements here and there that while they do have uh, legitimate additions to the game's combat and stuff like that don't really make it worth too much to me but you know what the best thing is if you disagree with me thoroughly just because you're a um uh, what's the word i'm looking for you know you're the sort of person who just disagrees with anyone on everything they say there's an eight hour free demo you can go play seriously like you can go play a demo of this game that's ridiculously long and probably goes further in than this video is actually up to but still, I just, I can't in good conscience recommend this over, well, pretty much any other dungeon crawler on the Vita. If, like, I mean, if you're willing to deal with the pain in the ass revive system and you're willing to save scum like crazy to get around that or whatever, what's here is a pretty basic dungeon crawler and it does work alright. It's just, yeah, that permadeath system is a massive pain in the ass just due to the way the game's balanced and there's nothing, uh... There's nothing I could feel that changes that. There's nothing I feel that makes this game stand out. The whole game would be better without that system, and the whole game would be better if the if the difficulty levels actually had some thought put into them. That's pretty much all I got. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.